Christmas is a great time for angels. You see them in department stores, on Christmas tree branches, and on holiday greeting cards. But many people are confusing demonic dalliances with real angelic visitations. Today's program will help you understand the difference, a difference that is more crucial than ever as more and more people are being deceived. Stay with us. From Chicago's Moody Church, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. In his series, A Flurry of Wings, Dr. Lutzer brings part two of a message on what angels know. In Isaiah chapter 6, angels worship a holy God. Here we learn one thing they know. Now look at who was it that those angels were honoring. You say, well, that's very clear. I saw the Lord, Jehovah, Yahweh, as it is in the Hebrew text. That's who they saw. Well, you're right, but you know who that was? It was Christ. It was Christ. Look at John chapter 12. Jesus is having a spirited discussion with the Pharisees, and they're trying to figure out who he really is. And it says in verse 37, But though he had performed so many signs before them, yet they were not believing in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, And then I want to pick it up in verse 40. There's too much here in the text to comment on. Pick it up in verse 40. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they see with their eyes and perceive with their heart and be converted, and I heal them. That's right out of Isaiah chapter 6, the passage I just told you about. Verse 41, these things Isaiah said because he saw his glory and he spoke of Him, Christ, that was Christ whom the disciples were honoring. When they were there saying, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. They were speaking about Jesus. They saw him high and lifted up. Now you can understand why their wonder is increased, because now they are going to see him low and despised. We're back in Luke chapter 1. And this is where it says now, uh, he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. Verse 32, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Aren't you intrigued by the way the Bible just throws things out for us to ponder and think about? Notice that Jesus is the son of the most high. We get that clear. But he's also looked at as the one whose father is a man by the name of David. Well, how can that be? Well, it can only be if the father, if Jesus Christ, who is one with the father, God, becomes a part of the human family. And that's exactly the message that Gabriel was on his way to present here to this virgin. What he was saying to her is, you are going to be the mother, and because David is your great, 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 great grandfather, in effect, the child that you bear, David, will be his father. He will be a man. And what a mystery. And you see, the disciples know how far Christ came. They saw him in his glory. They saw him fill the whole universe with his beauty. And they were singing his praises. And now suddenly they hover over Bethlehem and they see this infant in the crib and they see him there and they are filled with incredible astonishment and amazement. No wonder there are some things that they long to look into. Do you think that the angels were fascinated with Christ's life on earth? I want you to know that moment by moment they were constantly hovering near him. Here is Jesus who is out 40 days and 40 nights and he's fasting. And after that time he is hungry and then he has that altercation with the devil. And it says that when the devil departed, angels came strengthening him. They were there. They were there. And then we come to Gethsemane where Jesus is on his knees and saying, If it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. And the disciples are thinking to themselves, Jesus, get out of this. 
How can you be both the man of glory and the man of suffering? It isn't right that the Son of God should be spat upon and humiliated and tormented. Get out of this! And that, of course, is the way we as the people who live in America reason. Where is the escape hatch? Deliver me! And Jesus said, no, I have to keep back the angels. I could call ten legions of angels, hundreds of thousands, and they would deliver me just like that. But I need to restrain them. I will not call on them because it is needful that I suffer. And the angels saw it all. They saw it all. And they wondered in amazement. And then we come, of course, to the resurrection of Jesus. And who is at the tomb to announce the news but angels? And who is there when Jesus is ascended on high on the Mount of Olives but angels accompany him? And then they will be with him when he returns to earth and finally fulfills this prophecy, by the way. I don't think the prophecy has been fulfilled. You know, this is a very controversial statement where it says the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of David forever. Some people say, well, that throne is in heaven. That's what it means. Jesus is going to rule over the house of David in heaven. He's got a throne up there somewhere. Well, bless him. He does have a throne in heaven. But the house of David and the throne of David seems a very earthly kingdom. That's why some of us actually believe that during the millennial kingdom, Jesus is still going to rule from this earth, from the city of Jerusalem, though he has a glorified body. And though we have glorified bodies, there is going to be a population in planet earth that does not have glorified bodies. And there will be that that interaction, just as there was with Jesus after the resurrection, he and his disciples, and that someday he will still rule from the city of Jerusalem. You say, well, you believe that? Yeah, yeah, I believe that because I don't think this prophecy has been fulfilled. But my point this morning is simply that angels will be there. They will accompany him. Will you remember that angels are fascinated with Christ because they saw him high and exalted and they saw him low and humiliated and they knew how far down he had come. Secondly, angels are also interested in us. They know us. Let's pick up the text now. Mary says in verse 34, how can this be 